This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to Super Yacht News. Uh, just before we go into our first story, I just wanted to remind viewers that we have a dedicated news channel now called simply Super Yacht News, where we show our Super Yacht News videos in smaller bite-sized chunks. We also post the full news video, the one you're watching right now. We will also post that on that channel, usually 24 hours after it goes live on the main channel. Uh, we have eight and a half thousand subscribers on that new channel now. So if you want to check it out, I will put a link in the description. Uh, you can look it up. It's Super Yacht News in, on YouTube. All right, we'll move on to our first story. And this is about Mark Zuckerberg. On Friday, we broke the news that Mark Zuckerberg had bought not one, but two Super Yachts. Uh, it was breaking news on the channel uh, on Friday, early hours of Friday morning it was. The brand new yacht, which is now their flagship, the biggest ship they've ever built. Uh, the 118, not 80, 118 meter or 387 foot super yacht, which is now named Motor Yacht Launchpad. Now, uh, the reason why I said that about the length of being 118, there was quite a few comments on the last video saying 180 meters isn't 387 feet. It's 118 meters. So um, anyway, the vessel is valued at around 300 million US dollars. Uh, he also purchased a 30 million, pro approximately 30 million dollar support vessel, previously named Moti Yacht Dapple, and it's now called Moti Yacht Wingman. A support vessel, if you don't know, carries helicopters, tenders, submarines, jet skis, all of the stuff that the main yacht may not be able to carry. Although a 118 meter, 5,000 gross ton super yacht could pretty easily carry all the things that this support vessel is carrying. Probably except the helicopter, because it, apparently that vessel doesn't have a helicopter landing pad. Now, launch pad was heading to St. Martin via the English Channel, according to AIS in our last video, but she's already changed that destination and she's now heading to Gibraltar. Um, in actual fact, there's another yacht there in Gibraltar, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, which is also owned by somebody who's very high profile, like Mr. Zuckerberg. Now, uh, no doubt the yacht will be fueling there and the stop will fulfill her requirement to leave the EU after being delivered to avoid paying taxes on the build, which would otherwise be due. Possibly the yacht will then head across the Atlantic. Time will tell, stay tuned, we'll find out anyway. Anyway, after we broke the news, there were a number of comments which kept popping up in the comments section we thought we'd address. Now, when, when the vessel sold, uh, we said that the vessel was owned, was, was ordered by a Russian who's on the sanctions list. And the question that kept coming up was, how is Mark Zuckerberg buying a super yacht from a sanctioned Russian? Uh, it's a good question, um, but we can answer that question. Um, the reason he's able to purchase it is because the Dutch government has intervened in a number of sales of yachts built in the Netherlands when the original owners are Russian. In the agreement, owners can sell the yacht to a non-sanctioned individual, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, somebody who's not Russian, and the Dutch government puts the money into a kind of escrow account, and then they will hold on to that money until the sanctions are removed against that person, and then the person will collect the money. Uh, so the money doesn't, so Zuckerberg, although he's purchasing the yacht from that person, he's not paying that person, which would be uh, breaking sanctions rules. So that's how he's able to take uh, take uh, possession of that yacht. Uh, so a couple of other questions that kept coming up is, is, one of them is, at what size does a super yacht become a cruise liner? Well, a none, because the status of a cruise liner is not a designation based on size. It's a de it's a designation based on the type of vessel, right? Cruise liner being a commercial merchant vessel. Uh, you know, it's a business. It's taking people on cruises or whatever, or crossing oceans for for profit. You know, it's a cruise liner. Uh, that so re I mean, there are cruise liners or cr cruise ships that are smaller than some super yachts, um, but the the purpose is the same. It's for people going on holiday and stuff. A private yacht is just that. It's a privately owned vessel used for recreation. That's the definition of a yacht in the rules. And the definition uh, is regardless of size. Now, um, another thing that kept coming up, it's not a question so much, but as a statement, people were saying Zuckerberg is getting ready for the nuclear war. Crazy kind of comment. But I don't know about you. I mean, I was in the military, but you don't need to have been in the military to know that if there's a nuclear war, a yacht is not going to save you. So I don't know what the thinking is behind that one. 
So anyway, we'll move on to our next story. Uh, Motiot Romea has been spotted in Durban in South Africa. Actual fact, we, uh, somebody contacted us through Twitter to ask us if we could identify this yacht that was docked uh, near where he lived in the marina. It's an 81 meter or 265 foot super yacht and belongs to a Russian Alexander Nessis. The vessel was last spotted in the Maldives in December. Now, the yacht was built by Aberking and Rasmussen in 2015 as a gross tonnage of 2300 gross tons and is valued around $125 million. Now, whilst the owner Nessus is not currently sanctioned by the US, EU or UK, he is currently sanctioned by Ukraine. However, his company, which is called Polymetal, is sanctioned by the US. Uh, more specifically, it's on the speci specially designated nationals and blocked persons list. Nessus has a value of two billion, according to Forbes. Now, the vessel is, like I said, an 81 meter vessel. It can carry 12 guests and has a crew of 25. South Africa has had some uh, political standoffs in the past uh, with vessels uh, purporting to go to uh, South Africa. In 2023, Motiot Nord created one of these political standoffs between local officials in Cape Town and the national government when they planned, at least on AIS, to travel to Cape Town. Uh, at least they had Cape Town as a destination on AIS. The Mayor, Gordon Hill Lewis, and the Premier of Western Cape, Alan Wind uh, called on the national government to deny the entry of Nord into Cape Town, but the national government in Pretoria said that the yacht was welcome to dock in the city. However, Nord never went to South Africa and appeared nine days later in uh, the Maldives. Uh, Motia uh, Romea at the moment seems to be under the radar. Anyway, we'll move on to our next story. The Dilbar berth has been sold in Antibes. Uh, the berth at the Supiot Marina in Port Vauban in Antibes, France has been sold. Burgess announced the sale on their Instagram page saying they represented both parties, the buyer and the seller. So we wondered how was this happening? The berth, which is at Port Vauban, it's berth A18 and it's what is known as the Dilbar berth. It was owned by Alicia Usmanov, who is the owner of Motiat Dilbar, who is a Russian who's currently sanctioned. When they reported that it had been sold, it, it made it had us scratch in our heads because he was the owner up until very recently. The Instagram post from Burgess said, Burgess is delighted to announce the sale of the 160 meter berth, A18, A18 at the International Yacht Club de Antibes, representing both the buyer and the seller. That was the post they put on Instagram, as you can see on screen. Uh, now he said, like I said, the berth was previously owned by Usmanov and um, it's where he kept his yacht Dilbar, which is a 156 meter or 511 foot super yacht, which was until last year, the largest super yacht in the world by volume. Uh, it's been overtaken by Moti Yacht Blue. Uh, Dilbar was named after his mother and was in refit in Hamburg in Germany when uh, Usmanov was added to the sanctions list. The yacht was in limbo for months there and eventually was towed to the headquarters of, of uh, Lurston in Bremen and put into a giant floating dry dock and it's been there ever since as far as we know. So how could the berth be sold if it was owned by Usmanov? Well previously the berths sold in Port Vauban were done on a leasehold uh, type of sale which is a predetermined period such as maybe 10 years and as such, his leasehold may have expired. We tried to get to the bottom of that. We couldn't get more. We couldn't get the information that we were looking for, really. Um, so it's probable that his lease expired. He couldn't renew the lease, obviously, because he's sanctioned, and the berth was sold to someone else. On the Port Vauban website, it says on the first of January two thousand twenty-two, the guarantee of use contracts, commonly known as a CGU, replaced the system of leasehold contracts set up in nineteen seventy-two. All owners of a yacht over 30 meters can now secure a berth in a defined area of the port by entering into a CGU for a period of 5, 10 or 21 years. So whoever whoever's taken that berth uh, probably has a very large yacht, right? Because it's the 160 meter berth. Uh, on the Burgess statement, they told us that the berth was owned by the Port of Antibes. Uh, that, that was the seller. Okay, so we'll move on to our next story. Motiot Clio, uh, we reported on the 19th of January in episode 290, uh, Russian Oleg Deripaska's yacht Motiot Clio had changed flag states from the Cayman Islands to the West African country of Cameroon. Uh, 
Uh, well, now the yacht, which is valued at around $65 million, appears to have changed name also. Uh, now broadcasting as Motor Yacht Alta. Now, what's interesting is the yacht is still listed on the IMO website as Clio. Um, we've, not, we've not received any update in a change of name, but somehow the name has changed. So the vessel is now broadcasting this new name on AIS. Uh, like I said, it hasn't updated in the IMO database, but sometimes it's a bit slow. So as far as we know, the yacht has not changed owner. Uh, like I said, the yacht is linked to the Russian billionaire Oleg Deripaska, and it was mostly laid up since it fled from Europe after the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, it was headed to Turkey and then Adler in Russia, and it was there for, for over a year. The yacht was registered in the Cayman Islands until May 2023, when it was apparently deregistered and had no registration until January of 2024. Okay, we'll move on to our next story. We've had some information on the yacht Amadea, which is currently laid up in San Diego, as the US government moves along their court case to allow them to sell the vessel. Now, a source in, the, in a previous video, we, we talked about the costs of maintaining this vessel, and it was some $600,000 a month that we're spending. And we talked about how many crew they probably had on board and the fact that they have to have minimum manning and stuff like that, which is probably about 12 to 13 uh, people. And we, we talked about the fact that the crew salary was something like $360,000 a month. And we tried to work out why it would be so high. Anyway, we've had some information from a, an anonymous source so our contact said there are 20 to 25 crew on board, certainly not a full complement of 36, but it is above the minimum safe manning. Additionally, at the dry dock period, which we mentioned the vessel was due to be going into dry dock, has been rescheduled for May, uh, delayed two months from the information in our previous video. Also, she's moored in an industrial port without short power and runs her gensets continuously, so it's running generators to keep power to the vessel which obviously means that they have to use fuel to do so. That's why we were saying there's a fuel cost in those maintenance costs, which they pay every month. Now, remember, if you have 25 crew on board a yacht, which is higher than I would have expected, to be honest, but if you've got that number, uh, a lot of those people will be on rotation, which means that they'll. if you've got 25 crew on, rot on full rotation, that means you've got actual 50 crew working for you, right? Now, it's probable that not all of them are on rotation, but some of them will be engineers, deck crew, probably. So let's say you've got 10 people on rotation. That means you actually have 20 people because the other 10 are on leave, right? And all those people are getting paid. So that would explain why if there's a 20, if there's 25 crew on board right now, they probably have a crew of um, 35 to 40 people actually on the, on the books, you know? So they've got to pay all of those people still a lot of money to pay out every month and i don't know why they need 25 people but you know like i said i don't have all the information there's probably a good reason for it all right so we'll move on to our next story uh, sailing yacht coru which is owned by jeff bezos has crossed the atlantic and arrived in gibraltar like i mentioned motor yacht launchpad uh, zuckerberg's new yacht is heading to gibraltar so there's a possibility that both of those yachts will be there at the same time now the crossing that they've just done across from the caribbean to the uh to the, the mediterranean that's something that will be happening quite a lot in the next couple of months by various different yachts. I call it the yacht migration. Uh, it usually starts in March as the weather in the Med heat, you know, heats up. Uh, a lot of the vessels will leave the Caribbean and head to the Mediterranean. It would be interesting to know how far the yacht, the uh, Coro being a sailing yacht, actually went using the sails, if at all. You know, without the engines, uh, is a sailing yacht after all. So it would be interesting to know how far they actually came across without using their engines, right? All right, we'll move on. We've got a yacht spot. This is Motor Yacht Flying Fox has been spotted in Oman. The yacht, which still shows as being in Dubai on AIS, actually left there a few days ago. And um, the vessel was, like I said, spotted in the port in Muscat in Oman. Now, the, the AAS hasn't been updated for five days, so it's obviously switched off right now. Um, but as you can see from the photographs here, it was moored in Sultan Qaboos port. I think I pronounced that correctly. She had said to her parents that she was being held on board against her will. She was. She said that she, she, um, she wanted to leave and she'd been told she couldn't leave. A new episode of the Yacht Report podcast is now live on YouTube and on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. In this episode, we will answer the question, is there a super yacht blacklist in terms of employment? And we also talk about a crew member who claimed that she was being held against her will on a cruise ship. And remember to check out our Patreon page, 
You'll find it at patreon.com slash man. You'll find many videos not featured on YouTube, including the Atlantic Vlog series and the Patreon chat series. We posted a new one at the weekend. Uh, and a number of new Patreon chats have recently been uploaded, including the one at the weekend. And obviously there's behind the scenes footage from trips to Super Yacht Marinas going on a new trip very soon as well. Now, if you've got any information for us about any of these stories or any other, please be sure to get in touch. The email address is in the ticker. You can get us on the About page of the YouTube channel. You can get us on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger, on Twitter, and on Threema. Be sure to like the video, very important for the algorithm. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for future notifications. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.